Okay, if y'all wanna go ahead and have a seat, we'll get started. Um, a few may filter in, but we've got three sessions going at one time, so it just depends on who's where at any given time. So if y'all wanna come have a seat. If you are wondering if you're in the right session, this one is going to be a day in the life. What it should look like day to day as an epic family and an epic student, okay? Um, that's probably one of the biggest questions we get specifically from new families is so, so now what? What does this look like? So we're hoping to answer some of those questions. Okay, so the first and foremost thing is how many of you have a job? Raise your hand if you work. Right. How many of you would love to get paid but didn't ever have to show up to work? All right, so, so, so just imagine, right, that your child's schoolwork is their job. But if nobody ever told them when to show up, or they had a consistent schedule of when they're supposed to do their job, but they still want to get paid, they want the A's, how many of you think that's a workable solution? Right, okay, so I mean, I love my job at Epic. Just a little quinky dink about me is um, I have been with Epic since the days the door opened. I was actually, my claim to fame at Epic is I was Epic's first teacher hire. So I was hired a year before Epic started. Long story, we couldn't start that year. We had to start to the next year. So anyways, technically I've been here almost 14 years. But point being, I love Epic and I love my job at Epic. But honestly, if you want to pay me and I don't have to show up and I can hang out in my jams all day and like do what I want and still make an income, come on, like who wouldn't do that? Well, we have to encourage our children that their schoolwork is much like a job. It is their job growing up until they get big enough to have a real job. And what you train in the early years is what is a resultant factor in the later years. Now, does that mean you don't have flexibility? Of course. I have some flexibility with my job. But ultimately, I work Monday through Friday because that's my job schedule. Now let's talk about your schedule. Your schedule does not have to look like Monday through Friday, right? Your job schedule could, for your students could be Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday or Thursday through Monday. I mean the truth is you still have some control over the schedule but the key word there is schedule. They have to show up on a consistent basis at the same time to do their job if they want the A's, right? Because you don't get paid if you don't show up consistently, all right? Consistency is key. So first of all, I want you to plan with your teacher. And when I say plan with your teacher, I want to encourage you that we are of, we believe at Epic of the voice of the family. There are certain things that we have to abide by with state and federal funds, like, you know, state requirements. But there is a lot of flexibility there, and that should be a collaborative discussion with your teacher. Um, outside of Epic's specific requirements, you should be able to have open communication with your teacher and come up with a schedule that works for you. So let me give you a couple of examples of what that might look like. First of all, I am also an Epic parent. All three of my children graduated through Epic. We, we started when they were all in middle school back 13 years ago and they went through in high school and graduated. So I'm not just talking from a family engagement training perspective. I'm not just talking from a teacher perspective, but I'm talking to you from a real parent perspective, okay? For me and my house, this doesn't mean it works for you and your house, we did a four day a week school week. We did a Monday through Thursday and then three day weekends. Why? My kids were all athletes and for goodness sakes, they couldn't decide on a similar sport. So we were in various different places every weekend and all the time and I lived in a car. And Fridays were really hard because they were always competitions and tournaments and all the things that go on on the weekends. And I was like, you know what, kids, you're gonna have to finish by Thursday because I can't do Fridays, right? This is a mommy thing. But I was able to negotiate, you know, a schedule with the teacher. Now, did we still have daily accountability? Yes, it took a whopping 10 minutes on Friday. We got up, did our 10 minutes, Friday's done. We've, you know, checked in for school and we had the rest of the day off, okay? 
So I also, as an Epic teacher, I had a family who did a joint, they, they, a mother, uh, a husband, wife team drove a truck and they left town every Thursday evening and came back Monday evening, right? Then one child. Well, the child obviously has to go with them because they are a team trucking company, right? So I knew that that child was going to only be able to do work on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Because how much work are you going to be doing in r rural Oklahoma, even with a MIFI, right? It's not a rural nationwide. It just became a little complicated. So teacher with that family, understanding the family needs, we discussed open discussion, what's a workable situation and what we could and could not do. And so we did all of their online work three days a week and then all of that written work went on the road with them and they had five days to complete it. So what I'm saying is the schedule, the job, is going to look very different for every household. On social media and somebody it's exactly what we have to do it and we must do it this way. And well, maybe your teacher said that, but did you say, but that doesn't work for me, let's negotiate a plan, right? So the, the truth is it can all be workable, but you have to have open discussion with your teacher and you have to collaborate and figure out what meets the state requirements and also what works for your family simultaneously. But the key to all of that is a schedule. That doesn't mean, you know what, well, We've got really busy lives. We'll get to school when we get to it. Maybe it's a Thursday evening. Maybe it's two weeks from now on a Tuesday. That's not going to work. So that is not the freedom of Epic, that you just get to it whenever you darn well feel like it, right? You have to have a schedule. Okay, so I encourage, once you find that schedule, that you write it down and post it. There's something about a visual to-do list, right? You see it every day. It, it sets an expectation. Nobody wants to show up to their job and nobody tell them what they're supposed to be doing. Because it's just a recipe for apathy and failure, right? When you show up to your job, they say, these are the things that I expect you to do at your job in order to be successful. Well, so when your child shows up day to day for schoolwork, whether that means that you do each subject for an hour each, you know, throughout the day and you take a 15 minute break in between each subject, or maybe you do all of one subject on one day and all of another subject on another day, whatever that looks like for you, there is flexibility, but y'all, nobody's successful in a job if nobody tells them what the job description is, right? We have to set those expectations, so I encourage you to write it down and post it so that you don't forget and so that your child or your student does not forget. Okay, remember it's flexible, the schedule should fit your family's needs, and the more detailed your schedule, the better, right? Specifically for kiddos. I mean, they may push back on structure, but the reality is if they wake up each day and go, oh gosh, today, you know, if I do these things, I could be done by noon and be done for the day, that's actually a motivator, okay, to have some type of, of, of schedule or parameter for them. Um, so, I'll, the, and just remember that there's always room for change. Never at Epic are you in a position where you have signed over all your rights and it's like concrete. I can tell you as a mom of three, three completely different personalities, how that comes from the same gene pool, I have no idea, but I mean, polarly opposite children with different needs and different interests that um, we had to pivot and change periodically. Okay, accountability. Ask your teacher for a pacing guide. If you log on to your curriculum and it does not show due dates for your assignments, your teacher can fix that. All you've got to do is ask. If you don't want them to assign the due dates and you want to assign the due dates, that's also okay as long as the due dates keeps you on pace, right? So what I did with my children as an epic mom is I would take the school due dates and I got with my teacher and said, I don't like those due dates because I don't want them doing their last final exam or end of the semester exam on the last day of school. Because if for some reason they got behind, <laughs> then we had a problem. <laughs> So what I did is I got with my teacher and I said, okay, 
So I know the last day of school is, say, December 20th, but I want my kids' pace to be the last day of school by December 1st. A, that's a motivator, right, that my kiddos could have, like, six weeks off for Christmas break, right? I mean, like, come on. But also, on the off chance, especially as they entered their teen years, um, they may have gotten like a little behind on occasion, and I work at Epic as a teacher, that that at least gave me a window to get them back on track. But that was my choice. What I'm saying is that whatever that pacing guide is, it needs to be a negotiation between you and your teacher, and she or he can set that within the curriculum or as a separate Google Sheet so that you can track exactly what your child's doing to the end date that you choose for your child. Okay, so it's just, again, it's a joint thing. If uh, you are not part of a co-op, ask your teacher what the local co-ops are. What is a co-op? A co-op meets one day a week or once every other week, and it brings all the students from like four or five teachers together, and they break it out so that all the littles are together, the upper elementary, the middle schools, and the high schools are all together in a group. And then each one of those teachers teach a singular subject lesson. The cool thing about that is you can develop, your child can develop friendships that are of their like grade levels, which is really kind of cool. We all need people, right? People need people. Um, and uh, it also gets them the opportunity to be in a classroom environment. One thing that they don't get at Epic is that concept of like raising a hand before speaking and you don't just stand up and wander around in the middle of the class time. Some of those fundamental like class things, it's good for them to know. Right? Just so that when they go to college or community college or tech school or even at a job symposium or conference, they understand that we don't roam the room when somebody's speaking. Like there's just those fundamental life skills kind of can be learned in a co-op because you have to collaboratively learn. Ergo, the name co-op. So consider joining one. Um, check your student's progress at the end of every day. I have to say I never did this. I wasn't an at the end of every day person. I have to be completely honest. Epic recommends you check your student's progress every day. I, because we did a four day a week school week, at about 3 p.m. on Thursdays, I would check my kiddos' progress. And if they were not on pace, because I did not want to do school on Friday because I would be a taxi driver in the you know car driving around everywhere, um, and they didn't have their schoolwork done. Well, then, then we had mommy child talks uh, in a very special way, you know, on Thursday afternoons, and um, they got caught up very quickly. Um, and so for me in my house, I have to say what we did is not epic policy. Epic policy is daily. And you know what? Since you can check it from your phone, heck, you can be like making coffee in the morning and just bring it up and then like get your grounds in there and look down and like there's your child's stuff. So you can absolutely check it daily in less than two minutes. It's not a huge responsibility. But um, I checked it every Thursday and then we sometimes we had to have a little a little talk you know to get back on pace okay effective study habits um, oftentimes there's study guides embedded in the curriculum that tells you exactly you know for note-taking skills guided note-taking um, uh, objectives they should learn from each lesson and I highly recommend that you print those. I also believe in note taking. Now, I have to be completely honest. I have three kids, like I said, off completely different. My first two kids, I could tell them to take notes. They were excellent note takers. I didn't teach them to take notes. They just kind of knew when they were reading through the stuff to take the notes, all the vocabulary, important dates, important people, write those things down. My youngest, it was one or the other. She literally wrote word for word everything in the entire chapter or she wrote nothing at all. Like she could not pull out the viable information for a note taking. Maybe it's the youngest of the family, I don't know. So we spent a lot of money in paper and ink because what I would do is I would print the readable lesson, hand her a highlighter, and she could, and I would say, now first go through and highlight all vocabulary easy because there's usually the bold word just like when you and I were in school right um, go through and highlight all the dates go through and highlight all the people now read through and add any other important information and so she just highlighted the information because she had a hard time pulling out the information and writing it down again you are the best litmus test for your own children to know what is their way of being successful and taking notes but taking notes is important 
Um, learning to take notes is important because you need to refer to those notes when studying for tests. Okay, uh, you want to limit distractions. Um, depending on your child's learning style, they may need some like music in the background or something like that, but I can promise you that Netflix and Minecraft should not be going on simultaneously with school. And if it is, and they say, but I can't do school without those things, hmm, <laughs> they can. And so you want to limit those distractions for two reasons. One, they need to learn to study, right? It is a learned thing. And if they are surrounded in an environment where it's a lot of noise overload and things like that, and they're used to that, imagine what's going to happen to them when they sit in a quiet room just like this at state testing and there's not a pencil dropped. Are they going to be able to focus and be successful? Probably not. If you have a dancer, they do a dress rehearsal. If you have a theater person, a dress rehearsal. If you have an athlete, they practice. You have to practice it like you're going to perform it, right? And if in the end of the year, not that it's all about state testing, but please keep in mind, it's not just state testing. It's state testing when they're little. But when they get older, they have to take the ACT or the SAT or the PSAT, which is just like state testing, right? So practice in third, perform it in tenth, right? Then if they go on to community college, tech school, or, or a university, guess what? When they sit down to take their final exams, just like state testing. These big, giant, quiet rooms with all these people in it and no background noise. So you might as well teach them now to like be able to perform in a nice, quiet, you know, environment because they will have to do it forever. So that's, uh, they typically don't bring you, even in workplace, like we have to do at Epic, we have to do Epic trainings, you know, a lot of my husband works at the VA hospital. They have to do these trainings and stuff. When they go into a training room to do training and do the little 10-question test at the end, they're typically not, you know, playing Minecraft simultaneously, right? It's a quiet environment. This is just life. So learning to perform in a study-centric environment with few distractions is ideal from the early years because it will pay off in the long run. Take breaks when you need. You guys, do not sit your kids down for nine straight hours and make them do school. Y'all, that's torture. I can't even focus on my job for nine straight hours. Like, I have to, I can't, I can't even sit behind this podium because I'm ADHD, so I have to walk around to talk to y'all. So please be patient with your kids. If you need to schedule them 30 minutes on, 15 minutes off, and do that throughout the day. If you need to schedule a full hour-long break and a 30 minute recess and whatever that recess is from reading a book to kicking a ball in the backyard to potentially Minecraft, whatever, just, you know, that brain break, please be conscientious of their daily schedules. They must have breaks. They must eat well. They must rest well. If they're up till 2 a.m. because we don't have bedtimes at home, you can't expect them to perform well at 8 a.m. If I'm up till 2 a.m., I won't be out of bed at 8 <laughs> no matter how hard I try. So those sort of things are super important. Um, let's see here. Okay, need more help? EPATs. All of these are EPATs. They are parents. They have kids in Epic just like your kids right now. We have EPATs with kids in pre-K all the way through seniors. So if you are really struggling with a particular, your child or your age group or whatever, and you're like, this is not working. Do you have any ideas? They're not the experts, but they're just like me. They're other Epic moms. And they can tell you at least what they do. Sometimes getting three or four different ideas helps you develop your idea. So please feel free to reach out to them. They are here to help you.